Hey everyone, it's Aaron, prepping Ohio. Uh, what you're looking at right there is the bird cherries. And the camera won't really focus too good on him, but the flowers are dried up and they're starting to produce little the little bird cherries. It's kind of neat, and there's millions of them. Just millions and millions and millions of them. Birds love them. I suppose that's why they're called bird cherries. So, <laughs> anyway, you can yeah. Here's here's a bunch more. There's some bigger ones. Let's see them right there. They're not edible. I guess they're toxic. I don't eat them, and I never have. But they're fun to throw at people when they're kids. <laughs> sort of what I did. Let's have us a look at the apple tree. See how he's doing. I noticed today earlier when I come down through here, they're getting quite large. Well. And there they are. Look at those. Look at those guys. How about that? And it's loaded with, well, look there. There's one of the cicadas. The noisy things you hear. That's just his husk, of course. Well, I dropped him, but that's just his husk or shell. And, of course, they're everywhere up there. I think you can see those. And things. It's kind of cool. This little tree... There, there's one that uh, has just gone from flower to starting apple. It actually don't look so good. And I guess you're supposed to prune these off. First, uh, when you got two growing close together. Let me see right here. You can see there's, there's three of them growing close together. You're supposed to pick some of them off, but I never do. I just kind of let them do their own thing. Here's a good example of why. One takes care of the other, but it's still putting energy into that other one. So you're supposed to pull off the smaller ones. I never do. I kind of just let them do their own thing. And there's, well, there's millions of these little apples here. Some of the best tasting apples I've ever had in my life. I don't know what kind of tree it is. It's a dwarf something, but, man, these things are good. Here's a little view of the pond. It's more of a mud hole now than anything. It kind of sealed it in when we had the goats. The goats kind of strip mined the hill. It took all the all the grass off of it, and every time it rained, all the mud would just roll right down in here. And the cattails got a hold of him. And this is this is what we're left with. It's just a little mud hole. We did throw some fish in here, and I don't know if there's any fish in here left or not. I don't know how how well they live. And there's a shoe apparently. My Kids like to throw a shoe in there, I guess. I don't know. But anyway, it's more of just a frog pond now. It's eventually going to sill in and just be a be a little mud hole forever, probably, I suppose. I don't know. It's kind of cool, man. Them cicadas are really loud. I think you can hear that. That loud hiss. Loud, uh, whatever it is. You hear that? Of course, they're up in the trees there. They're just everywhere. Pretty cool, really. Here's a nice look at some lemon balm. This stuff here. You can eat it. And I guess there's some reviews from, like, doctors or people or something that, uh, you can use this to treat ADHD. And it's got some other stuff. I don't know. I, I don't have ADHD, but I just like the way it tastes. I eat it. That kind of freshens your breath a little bit. And, uh, smells good. Smells like, uh, maybe lemon pine saw, I guess. This is, this is lemon balm. Pretty good stuff, really. Never really tried making tea out of it, but I guess you kind of can. Never really gone that far into it. But, maybe someday. Here's some of my cast iron that I use. Uh, start off with this guy right here. I love it. Absolutely love it. I think it's a 10 inch frying pan. And this one is an 8 inch. Or maybe it's probably smaller. I don't know what it actually says on there. Uh, it's upside down. And uh, get some light on it. I don't know. I can't see what that says. 5S gauge. So whatever. I don't know. It's probably about 6 or 8 inches. Whatever it is. I don't know. But 
And then here's my favorite, my Dutch oven. Yeah, just a regular old Dutch oven. Still got some gunk down in there. And then it's got the drip offs right there. The condensation. Get on there, buddy. Okay. Here's some of the cast iron, anyway. That's some of it that I use. What I don't like about this Dutch oven is that it doesn't have a hanger. So if I go to put it on a fire, I have to have some way to support it. This is not the camping style. This is for uh, an oven of some sort, which I didn't realize that when I bought it. Actually, when I bought this guy, I kind of looked at him, looked at the camping ones that have the recess lid with the lip on the outside so you can put your coals on top, and decided not to do it, not to buy it, not to mess with it. And as I continued through, I thought, you know what? I'm just going to go get that. Well, I went back and got it, brought it home, opened it up, and it's this style. <laughs> so, whatever, but it still works good. It still works great. I've cooked a lot of stuff in that, and I use these ones quite mm -hmm. often, or as often as I can anyway. Putting these on a glass top stove oops, is not really good because it likes to scratch everything. So there's kind of a trick to it if you don't have a, uh, what are those things called, a trivet, a thing that you can put in between your stove and your and your cast iron pan. So if you have to move it, you pick it up and then set it down. You just you know, slide it like you normally would on any other pan. So I really love the cast iron. I really, really love it. It uh if they're seasoned properly, which these ones are, these ones are seasoned very properly, and they're very smooth. Nothing sticks to them. But it's kind of an ongoing seasoning thing. When you use them, there's, there's still steps you have to take to, to keep them good. A lot of people like to, which I used to myself, uh, after I would cook something, I would put water in it while they're still hot after I would take, like if I'm frying bacon and eggs or sausage or whatever, I would just pour water in the old ones, not these ones, uh, in the older ones, and it would kind of knock everything loose, but it took so much more effort to re-season them, because you're kind of washing off some of the oil, which I didn't know that, I just, I didn't know any better. But with these ones, I've taken extra care with, and I always rub the oil in them, make sure they cool down nice and slow, and they're lodged, so they're, they're a good brand. And they uh, they should last my lifetime, and hopefully my kids will use them. And it's got one of those, those weird lid things for it. You know, it's just kind of weird how they you can't see it on the underside. There's a little stamp 10. I'm not sure what the 10 means. That's bigger than 10 inches, but yeah, I love it. Absolutely love it. Actually, the other day I made uh, beef ribs and barbecue. Barbecue beef ribs, I'm sorry and this on a fire and they turned out really good. It takes a long time to cook raw beef ribs and uh, especially on a fire. I mean you can throw it in a, a crock pot is really easy but it uses a lot of energy. I uh, just take this and I set up the little grate over top of the fire once the coals are going. I throw two packs of beef ribs and it's probably eight or ten ribs of the, the cut. They're not on bone, they're off bone. Throw them in it, uh, a little bit of water after it's already up to temperature and after it's already got the oil rubbed in it. And I use Sweet Baby Ray's. That's my favorite barbecue sauce so far. And I let it cook. It goes for six or eight hours, really. Go up and check the, check the fire every now and then, add a piece as needed. And it works, works pretty good. It does its job, and I'm really happy with it. And I'm kind of thinking if I don't buy another another cast iron Dutch oven uh, that I can make little spacers and then a hanger in the center and just use this one as a hanger or a, a hangable pot. And I really wish I'd have got the other one just because it's easier to set in the coals and then you can put the coals on top. I assume the other ones seal up a little better. And you can see there's a little crack right there. I don't know if ashes and stuff will get down in this. 
I haven't used it that way. Uh, I always cook it sitting on a grate above the fire, above the coals. So, yeah, there's that. And this little guy is so handy. This little tiny, I think it's, like I said, I think it's an 8 inch, or maybe it's a 6 inch, I don't know, whatever it is. This little thing I use all the time. Uh, my, my little guy, he really loves sausage. So, sausage patties, a couple eggs, some bacon. Fits in there nicely. Now when we're all together, I use the big boy here. Make a nice breakfast. Nice good one. Now I'm actually looking into recipes for the Dutch oven. And I'm also looking at alternative uses for it. Uh, I was mentioned the other day that you can bake in this. And that's something I've never done, is bake uh, like uh, bread or or cakes or something. I've never tried that and I thought that might be kind of fun. So maybe, maybe I'll get to do that. I don't know, I think that'd be kind of fun. But anyway, you can't beat cast iron, man. It's it's great. I, I absolutely love it. There's, and I guess if, <laughs> in any kind of situation, if you have a crappy old pan, you could use it as a hammer or a weapon of some sort, <laughs> I suppose, but you know, kind of the joke about 1950s wife with the cast iron skillet to her husband's head. And I could see how that could cause some damage. It's kind of funny, really, when you look at this. You think about the pioneers and the, the years ago that when there was nothing. And if they had a set like this, I mean, that was that was really top of the line. And they were high on the hog, I guess you would call it. And there's a neat fun fact about that. High on the hog is used to be considered the better meat was higher up on the hog. Bacon used to be considered uh, like second or third class food. It's kind of funny now that everybody loves loves bacon. But back in the day, it used to be considered kind of trash meat. Similar to lobster, which is actually kind of a cool thing. I might try to do some lobsters in, in this. Lobster used to be fed to slaves and prisoners. Uh, it was considered trash food. And, of course, now if you go buy lobster, it's very, very expensive. So I may try lobster. I'm not really a big fan of lobster, but I'm just, I might try it just to, to see if I can do it. I do like shrimp, and I do like crab legs. So maybe I can work something into that. I do like crawdad. Mud bugs, I guess some folks call them. But anyway, there's a little look at the cast iron. So, yeah, I hope everybody's having a good day. Enjoy it, because you don't know if you got another in coming. Thanks for